And now we're getting ready for our segment, Get Connected with Tricia Crane. Good morning, my name is Tricia Powell Crane. I'm the Executive Director for the Alabama School Connection. And we are here watching us on Get Connected on the Alabama Way. Uh, this is a segment where we talk about things related to public schools in Alabama. This morning we have with us Mr. Larry Raines, who is the Program Director for the Access Distance Learning Program. And uh, we're going to talk about what that means. Um, Larry has come to us today from the State Department of Education to talk about what access is and maybe something that you've heard about and talk a little bit about what distance learning has meant for high school students and middle school students in Alabama. So without further ado, let me say thank you, Larry, for joining us today. Well, thank you for the invitation. I appreciate you being here. Um, Larry and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about access, and he knows so much about the program. I said, oh, come please share your knowledge with our parents and our families that watch the Alabama Way. So I want to start a little bit. If you could maybe tell us what access stands for. It's one of those acronyms. Yes, uh, the State Department of Education is full of acronyms mm -hmm. and ACCESS actually stands for Alabama Connecting Classrooms, Educators and Students Statewide. So A-C-C-E-S-S. -S. Okay, and what it is, would you tell us a little sure. bit about what ACCESS is? Sure. ACCESS Distance Learning is a program where we supply course content or mm -hmm. courses with teachers mm -hmm. to uh, high school students throughout the state of Alabama. Okay, okay, and I think what's really interesting, we were having a little chat, um, we've really been in the virtual school business in Alabama for a very long time. Uh, we were really, you, I think you used the word forerunner, front runner. We have, uh, and I think it's surprising to a lot of people in Alabama where they uh, generally see Alabama as last place in this mm -hmm. and last mm -hmm. place in that. Uh, Alabama stands very well throughout the nation. Uh, with our distance learning program and not just throughout the nation but throughout the world. We've had visitors from as far away as uh, uh, Australia to come over and visit with our program wow. and to uh, see how it works and uh, of course within the United States although it's uh, kind of disconnected from Hawaii mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. we've actually been there to uh, uh, promote the program and talk about the program is because they felt like it was one that would fit their situation in their schools uh, well, just like it does here in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And we were talking a little bit about how the um, access pro program was born mm -hmm. and that it was born of a need. And I think that, to me, that's what makes it so successful. Whenever you're creating something to fill a need as opposed to just doing it because it mm -hmm. sounds like a good idea, <laughs> you tend to do it a little bit better. So right. can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, where did the program come from? Why did, why do we even have access? Why did, how did we become the front runner? Sure. Uh, back in around 2004, mm -hmm. uh, Governor Bob Riley, mm -hmm. uh, his, his girls were growing up in rural Clay County mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the idea came to him uh, from possibly some uh, distance learning that was going on through the University of Alabama had a online high school program that was mm -hmm. just kind of getting started. Mm -hmm. And then Troy University and Dr. Hawkins down there with his program, uh, they were uh, beginning to do some things uh, with distance learning with the colleges. Mm -hmm. And uh, Governor Riley saw a need, especially in the rural areas, uh, for quality instruction uh, in courses that small rural schools couldn't afford to mm -hmm. uh, offer to their children. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily because of staffing mm -hmm. uh, and in fact uh, I was principal at that time at a small rural school in Chilton County mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we had very few electives that our high school students could take because I just didn't have the teachers uh, to, uh, to teach them uh, either because of funding we had a limited number of teachers uh, of course that comes from the fact that our number of students determine the number of teachers. In small schools, you have limited students, or you have students, small numbers, but uh, which limits your faculty, right, uh, right. which limits the number of courses you can offer. Mm -hmm. So uh, Governor Riley and his daughters were kind of in that situation in, in Clay County and uh, began investigating. And uh, uh, from those ideas and from his initial work, uh, a task force was developed. 
and uh, the task force was made up of uh, educators, parents, mm -hmm. uh, 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 technology, technology folks, folks mm -hmm. uh, legislators, mm -hmm. uh, teachers, uh, administrators throughout the, from throughout the state, and uh, they developed a plan and uh, a five-year plan. And from that, in January of 2006, we offered our first courses, uh, wow. distance learning courses. We offered uh, web-based courses, mm -hmm. which had teachers working with the students through uh, the online courses. Mm -hmm. And then we also offered, and continue to, offer video conferencing courses. Right. And we were able to uh, set up the uh, labs throughout the state uh, to be able to offer both types of uh, delivery, both synchronous, mm -hmm. live, video conferencing courses, mm -hmm. uh, or asynchronous, where uh, uh, the teacher is teaching them and uh, the students can pick it up most any time. So it's not a live, live situation, but uh, the teacher does. Uh, and that as, as, as time has passed, where initially we offered, uh, I think it was 17 courses through video conferencing mm -hmm. and six courses through uh, web-based uh, the web-based area uh, to about 600 students that first year mm -hmm. and uh, uh, as time has passed we began to uh, and I was principal as I said during that time and mm -hmm. saw the need but I also uh, had the same problem that we've seen throughout the state and that is when you do synchronous courses where we're doing video conferencing one of the big problems with doing that was the fact that you have a bail schedule at your local school and I have a bail schedule right. and none of them, or very few of them actually match up so that you can do things That's live. Good point. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially from system to system. Within a system sometimes it matches up mm -hmm. but even within systems uh, schools have the autonomy pretty much to set their own schedule exactly. and uh, that became a problem. So now we only see about four or five percent of our students enrollments doing video conferencing so the large vast majority of them are doing the web-based courses okay and from that initial 600 uh, students and about 22 23 classes mm -hmm. uh, from 2006 to today uh, we're in the neighborhood of uh, and had grown up into uh, approximately 27,000 students statewide and uh, wow. we are out now we're offering uh, I think 110 different courses that That's we can amazing. offer to the students. That's a real success story. And, and it, it, has, mm -hmm. it has grown a little bit each year up until the 12, 13 school year and we kind of topped out mm -hmm. and uh, 13, 14 was about the same as 12, 13. This year we're down some but some of that is due to funding and uh, uh, the availability of uh, finances so that we can continue to offer this to the students. Right, and you know, I, technology has changed so much. Mm -hmm. I know that there have been some uh, incredible investments in technology. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. uh, not only does Access, the Access program, uh, which, and if I can go back to the beginning again, we actually were created through a line item in the budget, in Love the Education Trust items. Fund budget. <laughs> and uh, we continue to exist because by that uh, today, in fact, the, the, the budget process, I think the House is voting on the budget today. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're hoping to uh, uh, continue to exist, although we're certainly in the budget, both in the governor's recommended budget and the uh, uh, Dr. Bias's recommended budget. Well, I think this is one of those things. We're, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I would love to talk about what this has meant for your students. Okay. Um, you have that experience as a principal. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, some of the courses that are offered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm Tricia Crane. I am here today with Larry Raines, who is the Program Director for the Access Distance Learning Program at the Alabama State Department of Education. Larry has joined us today to talk about um, what is distance learning? What, is, what do we mean when we talk about distance learning? If you haven't had children in school for a while or if you have children who are young and haven't made it to those high school years yet, you might not be aware of the incredible opportunities that Alabama State Department of Education has afforded our students here in Alabama. Um, so 
Thanks again, Larry, for You're being welcome. here. Larry, you've been talking to us about how the program started and how it's grown and what a successful model it has been. Um, and we've seen other states and other mm -hmm. Uh, areas even internationally look to us mm -hmm. as the model which right. is it's nice to, to be in that place right we've been doing this for a long time and you had explained that it really came out of a need mm -hmm. uh, to serve our some of our rural communities who may not have had either the funds to hire additional teachers mm -hmm. uh, because it really kind of started as an elective right? right. Um, uh, enriching children's mm -hmm. experience in school, letting them see something outside of reading, writing, and arithmetic. Uh, and it's grown tremendously. Right. So that's what I want to talk about now. I want to talk about the kinds of courses. And we don't have to get into details, but um, you know, there are various sets of courses that mm -hmm. we've, that y'all have made available through Access. But talk to us a little bit first about the types of electives. I think, you know, yeah. foreign language and these things sure. that um, you may not think that your child has access to, but they do through Access, access. Right? That's right? Right. Well, we have uh, developed our courses over the years, uh, primarily due to requests from the schools, mm -hmm. and we still uh, listen to the schools uh, and the, the, the communities as they mm -hmm. might come up with a course. In fact, right now we're working on developing a course in Korean because of wow. the uh, uh, auto industry in the Montgomery area mm -hmm. and well in the whole central Alabama area. Mm -hmm. So we're working on developing a Korean uh, language course mm -hmm. or two and also a Korean culture piece where uh, uh, we can learn more about the culture uh, and be able to be better workers in that type of situation, both in the Montgomery plant and in the one uh, uh, just over into Georgia, but a lot of Alabama workers still work over there. So, uh, uh, and then from, as far as uh, courses, uh, we offer, of course, all the, we actually offer everything that a student in Alabama would have to have to earn a high school diploma. Okay. With the exception of the career preparedness course, mm -hmm. uh, we do offer several different vocational courses, but uh, uh, right now we're still in the development process of the career preparedness course mm -hmm. as they are trying to tweak it and get it just like they want it. Mm -hmm. And when they do, then we will have our course too. But uh, uh, we offer uh, five different foreign languages. Uh, mm -hmm. and several uh, as far as Spanish, which is our most popular mm -hmm. and uh, most requested course, uh, we offer four different levels of Spanish. Wow. Uh, we offer three levels of Latin. Uh, a little side story there, we had a student several years ago that uh, ended up uh, uh, accepting a scholarship from Harvard uh, and having his education paid in that Ivy League school because he had a background and had taken Latin and, wow. uh, and done really well in uh, all of his courses really in high school, but that, that helped him get over the hump. So uh, mm -hmm. that was one of our little success stories from in the past mm -hmm. as we have seen uh, many, many success stories over the, since 2006 when the program started. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I, as I said earlier, I was a principal at that time and uh, it's kind of, uh, uh, strange that I'm working with the Access program now, and I turned the program down initially when it was offered to me in the that? first go round uh, at my little small rural school, which I've always since then have found a lot more about the program and how vital it was for a situation, especially uh, like I was in there, uh, mm -hmm. and what it opened up to my students. Uh, uh, we were able to offer courses, uh, elective courses. Uh, which is what we primarily used it for mm -hmm. uh, there at uh, my school. And then uh, uh, some of the required courses, uh, the core courses, we had teachers to teach those, but mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't teach the uh, advanced placement type courses. Right. Uh, because right. we had just very little demand for that mm -hmm. or requests for that. But with Access, we were able to, uh, for the first time, in the history of my little small school offer advanced placement courses and we had five senior girls that elected to do that mm -hmm. and uh, every one of them came back the next year and expressed their gratitude for having that opportunity because all five of them had gone on to college mm -hmm. and they uh, shared with us how it 
helped them prepare for mm. the type of demands that they faced when they got to college. That's and the fact story. that they could be successful in taking courses on the same level as students in the more affluent areas of Alabama mm -hmm. and uh, gave them that confidence. And I think I've seen that, well, I know I've seen that throughout the state, mm -hmm. especially in the small rural areas where students do see that they stand right there beside students that are getting those type courses in their regular schools. Now in, high, in uh, through Access, they can uh, obtain these courses in, in any school in Alabama now. Uh, we offer uh, over 110 courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, uh, as I said, any course that you would have to have to earn a diploma in Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, we do offer uh, credit recovery. That's been one of our newer additions right. over the last, I think it's, we've been doing that for about four years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer credit recovery in all of the core courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we. This year, for the first time, we started offering credit advancement courses. Both credit recovery and credit advancement came out of the Alabama First Choice Initiative that started in the state back in 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as it's grown, uh, our courses have grown along with it. So we do a good bit of credit recovery and mm -hmm. uh, do some credit advancement. Uh, and anything that we can do to help the students in the state of Alabama, of course, that's our right. goal. And right. uh, uh, be able to provide that type to them. Well, I think it's even exciting, uh, you know, the idea of going uh, back a little bit to the advanced placement. Mm -hmm. I was surprised when I first learned that you could do advanced placement mm -hmm. through Access. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought, you know, you're going to have to have a teacher in front of you. Have you seen uh, advanced placement? I mean, we've had some real uh, improvement in mm -hmm. Alabama in the number of advanced placement courses that have mm -hmm. been taken. We've had some national recognition right. for that. Well, that's actually in the advanced, pl the AP courses. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, Yes, and uh, Alabama, of course, over the last, I think, the last two years has been a nation leader in the right. uh, number of increased enrollments in AP and in the uh, scores, AP scores on the right. test themselves. Right. And uh, I would like to think Access has played a little part in that, oh, too, I feel because we have uh, uh, students that now have access to AP courses right. through the Access Distance Learning Program. Right. That, that is... You know, you talk about finding out what students need, and this is really, it's almost like individualized learning mm -hmm. for students when right. you can deliver a class to five students or three students that they wouldn't otherwise have access right. to. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's very exciting. You've now expanded into middle school, right? right? We have. Uh, we've been offering middle school courses for several years now, but and we started with, uh, uh, through the State Department guidelines, uh, students can take uh, algebra, uh, hmm. they can take uh, the first year foreign languages, and they can take business technology applications. These are high school courses, but they can take them in the eighth grade if, if their system allows them to. Mm -hmm. And if the system also allows them to earn high school credits, they can actually get their high school credits toward their diploma in the eighth grade in these courses. But we have expanded that even more into now we offer uh, uh, we offer a, a ma a eighth grade math, we offer eighth grade science, mm -hmm. and uh, we offer uh, creative writing and a journalism course in the eighth grade. Oh, and these are written on the eighth grade level. Now those are not for high school credit, mm -hmm. but they are for eight, any eighth grade student that would like to participate. We've seen, uh, I guess, our biggest participation in junior high uh, with students taking Spanish, Spanish 1 and Spanish 2 sometimes. Well, and we're going to take a little break. When we come back for the next segment, I'd like for us to talk a little bit about how do I know if my child is right for access courses. And uh, you've got some information to share, I know, so please stay with us. Thank you for coming back and joining us. Uh, my name is Tricia Crane. Uh, we are joined today with, uh, by Larry Rains, who is the program administrator. I have to look at my notes here. I want to make sure I get it right. For the Access Distance Learning Program, um, Larry has joined us today to talk about what is Access and what kind of we've talked about um, where it came from. It rose from a need for students to have access to more classes. Access is an acronym uh, that Larry has kindly uh, explained to us once, and it's it's A C C E S S, um, and 
it's a wonderful program that we've really been a front runner in. I think, you know, we've talked a little bit about that and folks are always kind of surprised whenever we end up being a front runner. But we've been in the virtual school business for a long time. You know, virtual schools are seen as the up and coming way. Um, we've had some new laws be passed here in Alabama and uh, which is great for y'all because we're already doing it. You know, it's really the systems that have to, the school systems that have to get up to speed. We've talked about the kind of coursework that's available and that we have even advanced placement courses, which is just a fantastic option for kids who might not uh, be in the more affluent systems. Um, and you work with partners on that and, you know, you make sure that you can get the kids everything that they need to participate. What I want to talk about now, though, is how do you know if your child, you know, every parent has to sort of make this decision um, and in concert with maybe school counselors or Absolutely. the child's teachers to say, okay, I think my child can handle this online coursework because it does require some mm -hmm. perseverance on the part of the, right. the student and there's a lot of making yourself do things and not everybody is disciplined enough to do something like that. So I, I, tell us a little bit about how, how, can, how can parents think about this? How, how do I know if my child is ready for an access course? Right. Well, we do offer some uh, guidelines for you. Good. Uh, we have a, all of our materials uh, as far as the uh, description of the program is on our website. Good. Our Good. website is just www.access, A-C-C-E-S-S-D-L -S -S for distance learning. Right. right. Dot state dot al mm -hmm. dot us okay great and you can go to that website and uh, uh, just explore it uh, we're in fact uh, in the process of redesigning it but it's still up there mm -hmm. and uh, over the course of the summer we're giving it a little bit new look good, um, maybe a good. little more modern look but uh, uh, I would encourage anyone to go there I oftentimes uh, many times give that uh, address out so mm -hmm. that parents can explore there Mm -hmm. and see actually what's offered through our program. But we also, especially under the uh, students tab, mm -hmm. you can find uh, some uh, uh, FAQs or frequently asked questions on, do I fit as a distance learning student? And mm -hmm. uh, we've got some good information there that uh, parents can look at. Uh, students need to be self-motivated. Mm -hmm. uh, they really need to be uh, decent readers, good readers. Right. Uh, but then, too, we uh, have had some very good success stories with students, even in the special ed areas. That's great. Uh, now, when we have students there, as an old principal, uh, I always recommend that their caseworker or the person on the, at the school level that works with these students mm -hmm. really get involved in the courses with them and go, uh, especially go to the lab with them when they're working on their courses and mm -hmm. give them some additional assistance. But uh, we've had some good success stories even with the uh, students that are uh, special needs students. Mm -hmm. uh, as we have with students of all types. Uh, uh, and it has done so much for schools across the state. Access really to me feels two primary purposes and that is we feel the slots where are the blanks where you don't have teachers on your staff mm -hmm. that can teach the courses. Uh, foreign language for instance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, computer applications, uh, web design, a lot mm -hmm. of schools don't have teachers that can teach those courses. Or the other area is when students have scheduling difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, in the regular everyday schedule, they might need to take two classes that are offered only at the same time. Right. My daughter was that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so she had to drop out of band as a senior, and she oh. loved band, but uh, this was before access distance learning mm -hmm. was around, where now she would have possibly been able to stay in band and take the needed courses for graduation. But mm -hmm. we had one student in particular that uh, uh, that's really a great success story, I think, for our program in that he was the he was the breadwinner for the family and it got to the point that he had to drop out of school to to work more hours so that he could support his family right. and uh, uh, we got involved with him and uh, uh, through the access program he was able to schedule the classes that he had not taken that he had to have for graduation we worked with his employer and uh, all students have to take their quizzes and tests in the presence of a locally approved facilitator, mm -hmm. uh, 
could be on campus, could be off campus, but in the presence of that facilitator mm -hmm. for security purposes. Right. But uh, then uh, we were able to help him work through those courses, take those tests, and uh, he graduated from high school. Instead of being a dropout, he now is a high school graduate. So, That's a wonderful uh, we story. Were, uh, we, were, we were really uh, thankful that we were there for him. Right. And, well, and uh, kids have all sorts of needs. And, yes. you know, finding out what it is they need and using access to deliver mm -hmm. that education that is so important mm -hmm. where, like you say with your daughter, you know, I'm, I'm, I've heard stories of kids dropping out of their favorite thing that they do in order to take their coursework and this allows all of those good things to happen. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great program. And to we leave a lot of that up to the local school. Okay. Uh, a lot of those decisions we leave up to the local school. We don't put a lot of requirements on them other than they have to, the kids have to take their quizzes and tests in the presence of that locally approved facilitator right. and that's for test security. Right. Uh, but other than that, when, where, uh, at what time they they do their coursework, that's really determined by the local system. Uh, we let them make those calls. Well, and that brings up another point because I know some of the folks that are watching may not have realized that access was available. Maybe mm -hmm. they, it just hasn't come up. Maybe they have children in high school, but it is a local decision. Yes. And so mm -hmm. while the program is available to every high school in Alabama and some middle schools right. now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it might not actually be there. They may not be offering sure. Mandarin Chinese right. at this high school. Mm -hmm. So I I'm, I'm guess I'm thinking if I'm a parent and I want, you know, and I, I, where do I even start? Right. Well, first off, you can go to our website and call me. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about it. But uh, the thing to do would be to talk to your principal. Well, I guess the first thing would be talk to your counselor because that's where it all starts. Okay. The counselors are very active in our program. We train counselors throughout the state. We train principals. Principals are knowledgeable of our program. And then uh, uh, if, if they still have, I guess, problems with it because they have to have a facilitator mm -hmm. on site. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the one area of the program that we don't fund because basically the program is available at no cost to students throughout the state. Wow. But that facilitator position has to be funded with local funds mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that, is a, that is a holdback in some areas mm -hmm. uh, because they don't feel like they have the funds for that. But uh, give me a call and we can talk about ways to do that too. Uh, we've okay. worked with a lot of systems on ways to really raise funds to do that. But uh, uh, in the presence of that facilitator, they can take their quizzes and tests. And then uh, other than that, it's just wide open for students. Uh, but you work through your local school counselor and you must be enrolled in an Alabama school. Right. Uh, we, uh, and as I said, it's no cost to any student enrolled in an Alabama public school, mm -hmm. but we are also available to the non-public school students too uh, for a fee. And there is a fee involved with that because of uh, uh, the program is supported through tax dollars and uh, sure. uh, we can't use public funds for non-public purposes. Exactly. So uh, we do make the program available, but for a fee. Gosh, this is just such good information. Um, I know that uh, especially in the areas where they don't have access to these this rich, broad mm -hmm. curriculum, um, and even the credit recovery and right. the credit advancement, mm -hmm. advanced placement, it just it can open up a whole new world and to kids. And as I said, kids. to public school students, it is mm -hmm. at no cost to the system, right. uh, except for the facilitator. Well, uh, I want to say thank you today for, uh, for coming to us today and sharing all this great information. Um, this is exactly the, you know, I'm, I'm re-energized again after I spoke, I spoke with you a couple of weeks ago. I thought, more people need to know about access, and it's something that you need to start thinking about when your children are maybe in the sixth, seventh, eighth sure. grade. You yeah. know, will my child be able to do this? Would this open up avenues for my child? Because sometimes it will take a little time to work with the school. Not but, only helps them in the high school area, but it helps them prepare for college. Absolutely. Because more and more colleges are offering distant learning courses. Right. So, uh, thank you so much thank for coming today, thank you Larry. For me and, the opportunity. and we will have your web address and uh, and and might put your phone number. Up too. I think okay. you it's on the website too. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us today.